And uh, I think uh, that just brings us to maybe you want to mention, we should mention a couple of best practices because I think it's really important to get into good habits right away when you're coding. You know, whenever I'm doing any form of, of an intro to fill in language here, um, and this could be SQL, C Sharp, Python, anything like that, um, I probably spend a good third of the time just talking about uh, best practices that, that to go with, um, uh, with a golf analogy, that if you're ever going to go learn to, to, to golf and basically don't do what, what most people do, including myself, which is decide, hey, I'm going to take up golf and just head out and you know just start whacking on some balls the problem is is that you're learning bad habits right from the get-go and so when you're under stress what's going to happen is you're going to revert back to those bad habits and, and the exact same thing holds true here that this is the perfect time to start to develop those good habit because the habits that you develop now are the ones that are going to follow you throughout the rest of your uh, the rest of your career yeah yeah. So one of the good habits we want to pick up is the idea of commenting your code. Yes. Have you ever had a situation, Christopher, where you wrote a program and then you had to come back to it maybe uh, three months later to make a change and you found yourself going, what was I doing? Uh, three minutes later. I, I always like to say I have a great memory. It's just really short. The number of times where I've written something out and then go back to it later and I start to go, why in the world? Or the, the other one that gets me is I'll go and I'll look at my code and I'll go you know, why did I do it that way? It would have been much easier if I would have done it this way. And I'll go back in and I'll start recoding it and I'll get about halfway through and all of a sudden I realize, oh, that's why, because, you know, whatever the reason was. And so if you throw in those little comments, those kind of messages in a bottle, it makes it that much easier to remember later on exactly what it was you were doing. On top of that, I would also say this, for those of you that are brand new to Python, this is a great way to take notes yes. so that you go ahead you write out a little bit of Python that does whatever it is that it does and then right on top of it you put in a comment that explains what that code is about to do yep that'll help you reinforce things yep and the other advantage to it is one of the other things that'll happen the more you get into coding is you may find yourself coding and someone else is coding and you're looking at someone else's code or someone else yep. is looking at your code and I can tell you I have yet to meet a program that somebody handed me that had too many comments when I'm trying to understand, it's bad enough that I have trouble reading my own code yeah. six months later. When I'm trying to understand someone else's code, that can be really uh, remarkably difficult to try and understand and follow through what someone's done. And you're going to notice this very quickly. You're going to appreciate those code examples which have comments. So, yes. Let's 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 try and create another generation of people with the who do put comments in their code. You'll hear about the principles of self-documenting code. People who argue you don't need comments. I like comments. Please put them in there for me. I appreciate it. Yep. So. Yeah. So you can put in information about what your program does, uh, why you, uh, what a particular command does. You might have written a little note saying, hey, I used this command instead of that command because I discovered the following. Yeah, that's the big one, yeah. And also said anything that would help someone understand why you did something the way you did. And the syntax in Python for using uh, comments is the pound symbol or a hashtag. Mm -hmm. So anything in Python where the line starts with that pound or hashtag is going to be completely ignored when the code is executed. It's basically going to say, oh, those are just notes for you. Okay, fine, I'll ignore those. Yep. So if I go back to, let me go to Visual Studio again, and let's do just a little example. So we go here, and I can add a nice little comment here saying this is a comment. Ooh, pretty color. And, uh, whoops, and I can add lots of comments. Yep. And you brought up the point of the color. That's a really uh, good point there, Christopher. One of the other nice things about Visual Studio is it actually uses color coding mm -hmm. to help us keep track of what we've typed in. So when you look at this code here inside Visual Studio, you'll notice that the comments are all in green. And Ready. some of the other sort of neat things that you've got going here is you've got, um, if we take a look here, I'm going to try this sort of, nope, touch doesn't work for me. Let's do it this way. Uh, do -do -do. So you can actually see that the string, mm -hmm. so a, a string of text that's going to be displayed, shows up in red. That's Visual Studio's way of saying, hey, I recognize that's a string of text. Uh, the print, the word print here, actually shows up in black. That's a way of saying, oh, that's one of your commands that you're using. Yep. That color coding, you'll find useful at helping you find those occasional mistakes occasional, that haunt okay, programmers. Yeah, occasional. So, uh, so you'll find that really useful, that different sort of color coding. Now, here's a cool little uh, geek tip, because we've got to have some fun, show you some neat little things so you yep. can impress your other geek friends. Uh, if you don't like the colors, I actually find that green sometimes a little bit hard to read for the comments. Yeah, that's a little light. 
In the very top right corner of Visual Studio, there is a little box and it's called the Quick Launch. And if you go there and you type the word font, it'll actually bring up a pop-up menu. And what this does is it actually searches the tool itself and tells you where in the tool you can change a setting. So I can go here to find out how do I change information mm -hmm. about the fonts and the colors of my code editor. Yep. So I go, oh, look at this. Under options, I can change environment, fonts, and colors. If we click on that, I'm going to zoom back out again here. You'll see that I can change things like my font size. So if you want the text to be bigger, I've got it set to 16, a little bit large, but that's because we're doing a presentation. You probably have it something smaller at home. And I can do things like I can go down and I can say, you know what, for my comments, I would like the default color to maybe be uh, purple mm -hmm. instead of green, because maybe that's a darker color and easier for me to see and distinguish. And you can make it bold if you want to, and you can give it a lovely yellow background, and that would be quite hideous. <laughs> um, by the <laughs> let's way, let's not do that. Yeah, let's not do that. Uh, but really, and it gives you a sample of how it would appear here. But it's wonderful that you do have that ability to customize it. And I'm going to leave it, set it back to the default for now. Uh, which is green, just because I don't want to uh, mess you up. I want to match what's on the slides. But you can change it to anything that you like. So you really can customize that look and feel inside Visual Studio. It's yep. one of the nice features of the product. And I think as we do that, so we've talked about the colors. Yep. You know what? I think if yeah. you have got that working, you are now a coder. Once you see that hello world appearing on the screen, add a comment, yep. you are now a coder. And uh, I do want to just uh, real quickly here, first of all, let's, let's not downplay this. Mm -hmm. Number one, congratulations. If you get something to print out on the screen, you're a coder. Yes. You know, it's like Susan and I both run. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, I'm not really a runner because I haven't done fill in distance here. If you run, you're a runner. Yes. If you write code, you're a coder. It's yep. very simple. There is no, you know, nobody's like, you know, asking you to bring in a, a, a portfolio uh, to, you know, confirm that you are or are not a, a coder. I mean, if you're going for a job, but that's something completely yeah. different, you know. <laughs> but as far as whether or not you're a coder, hey, you're a coder. Yes. So. Um, the other thing I do want to mention real quickly here, just because there's still been um, a fair amount of questions in the chat window. I just want to throw it up one more time. There's again the URL. And again, the big button here that I want to highlight is this button right here, download zip. That's the easy way to get That's everything. That's the easy way to get everything. Yeah. So uh, like I said, periodically, this is going to be, we're going to go in and update all of this. All that you have to do when you want to go get the latest files that we've played with, just click download zip and that will go get everything for you. Um, in fact, I actually did make one little change. There was one mistake in the Word document, the link to uh, download Visual Studio. Okay. Uh, so I just went in and, and updated that. Um, so again, that's the easiest thing to do. Don't worry about syncing or anything like that. If you are curious, I have to do this. Okay. We do have an MVA on using Git and Visual Studio that you can go check out. But that's so far beyond what we're going to be doing. This really is it, is just simply hit download zip down there at the very bottom, um, and, uh, and that will give you everything that you need. All right. So I think we, are, uh, we have come to an end of module one. Yeah. We have coders. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Congrats, folks. You're yeah. coming. All right. So what do you say we uh, take 10 minutes, we'll come on back, and then we'll, we'll start to take that first step beyond. Yeah. Hello, world. Now we'll start solving problems with our code. Yes, excellent. We'll see you guys in 10 minutes.